Have you ever gotten involved in something or gotten in the middle of something and you realized this, this is really different than what I thought it was going to be? You know, sometimes that's, sometimes that's a negative thing. Sometimes that's a, yeah, this isn't, this isn't really what I signed up for. Sometimes that's a great thing. You get in the middle of it and it's like, you know, this is way different and this is, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. And you're really glad you did it. Colby, we have two kids. There's Josie and Colby. Josie's 10, Colby's 8. And um, we signed Colby up for baseball. So we signed him up and we're thinking, okay, well, this is it. This is, this is the start of the major league career right here. Seven-year-old baseball, right? Coach pitch. It's got to start somewhere. No, we thought, okay, he's going to have fun. He's going to meet some friends. He's going to, you know, a little work ethic and all that. And it's just his kid. It's coach pitch baseball. A year later, totally different than we thought it was going to be. It's honestly not even about baseball or Kobe at this point. It's about the people that God has brought into our lives and the other families that we've met along the way on the teams that we're on. And it's, and baseball's even secondary. And it's so much better than we thought that it was going to be. And so I want us to dive into the story, a story today about two brothers. Their names are James and John. Now, these brothers are disciples of Jesus. And when they set out on this journey with Jesus to be one of his followers, one of his disciples, they thought it was going to be one way. And then somewhere along the way, a switch was flipped, and they began to see this is not at all what we thought we signed up for. This is way different. They were all just kind of talking among themselves. And Jesus said, what's going on? And they said, okay, Jesus, Jesus, we want to know something. We want to know something, right? You're talking about this glory, this future glory, and all this kind of stuff. Which one of us is going to be the greatest in your kingdom coming up, right? Which one of us is greatest? And if you're a parent in this room, and you've tried to get a point across to your kids after a while, and they just don't get it, what do you do? Oh, my gosh. I think Jesus, it doesn't tell us Jesus did that. It doesn't like give us pictures. I think that's what he did. I think he's like, oh, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me, right? And he's like, guys. Okay. Let me tell you how it is. You want to be the greatest? If you want to be the greatest, you must become the least. And in that moment, Jesus took a room full of testosterone-driven stinky men and flipped the switch on them and said, this is not what you signed up for. This is what it's about. It's about serving others. It's about giving your life for other people. Now, Jesus gave us three reasons, three, I think, three things that we pulled out of these passages of why we should serve. I want you to grab your pen. I want you to write this down. Here's the first thing. Why should we volunteer to serve? Serving others is a requirement for living a great life. It's a requirement for living a great life. All the disciples were talking about who's going to be the greatest, who's going to be the, the biggest, the baddest. If you want a great life, Jesus said, you've got to become the servant of all. Look at that, verse 43. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. It's a requirement for living a great life. Here's the second thing. Serving others will never be convenient, but it'll always be worth it. It's never convenient, but it's always worth it. Why is it never convenient? I was thinking through this for my life, and, and the things I picked out in my life, and maybe it's the same for you, I don't know. The first thing is, is, man, I could be extremely selfish. <laughs> We're selfish people, right? I like my time, I like my stuff, I like doing what I like doing, and and it's just as simple as that. I get so, and it's not like I, I say, oh, I don't want to help people. No, I get so busy and so consumed with what's going on in my little world that I just don't notice the needs going on around me. That's what happens to me. I think, I think the second thing, and I think another reason why it's inconvenient is we're busy people. I mean, it's not like we got a, a bunch of time we're just trying to find and to fill with different things, right? You got jobs, you're, you got kids, your kids got jobs, your kids have extracurricular. I mean, you got stuff going on and everybody wants a piece of you and everybody wants money for this and time for this and there's no seasonal sports. It's all year round. Yeah, I mean, it's just all, we're busy. You got stuff going on. 
life is about investments. And investments are about choices. So if I have an allotment of money that I want to invest, I have to make a choice to invest it here rather than invest it here or spend it here. Meaning this is going to have to go by the wayside so I can invest my money here. Time is the same way. Attention is the same way. Everything in your life is about investments and choices. So with my time, I can either invest it here or I can invest it here. I can't do both. And this leads us to the principle that Jim Collins wrote in his book, Good to Great. He said, and you've probably heard this before, the good is the enemy of the great. They're good things. They're not bad things. It's not like you're out murdering people, right? I mean, selling drugs. No, you're, they're good things. But in light of other areas where you can invest that could be world-changing, life-changing, they're the enemy of the great. So if you want to live a great life, you serve. It's not going to be convenient, but it's worth it. Point number three, serving others is a lifestyle. And it begins with serving those God has put around me. Okay, so let's, let's take that first half of that. Serving others is a lifestyle. What does that mean? Well, if something is a lifestyle, it means it's a pattern in our life. So if I want to make something my lifestyle, I put it in the pattern, the everyday ritual of what I'm doing, right? It's a, it's a lifestyle that begins with serving those God has put around me. Who's around me? All right? My closest neighbor is my wife. <laughs> so for me... Serving should start with serving my spouse, serving my kids, serving your mom or dad, serving the people that are closest to you. You don't live in your house just because you liked the floor plan. You don't live in your neighborhood just because you love the pool and the amenities or the school system. No, it's way bigger than that. Here's why you live where you live. Here's where God planted you where he planted you. Because he saw that in your neighborhood, on your cul-de-sac, on that baseball team or whatever, that he needs a little Jesus there. And that's what Christ, Christian means. Christian means little Christ. I need a little Christ there, and I need a little Christ there, and I need a little Christ here and here and here. And that's why we are where we are. The problem is, is our attention gets so much on us and our world that we don't see the real reason God put us there.